So with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers once and always, you know, coming April 19th and the trailer being released this past week, you know, there are obviously a lot of questions. Now, I gave my thoughts and everything on uh, what was seen in the trailer, as well as kind of gave my reasoning, reasoning, I should say, as to why certain things happened. Like, you know, why I think the Ranger powers are back. I mean, it, to me, it goes back to the fact that uh, Zordon, when his energy tube was released, and he purified a lot of the evilness, you know, in the, in the galaxy at that time, it also helped restore some of the power coins, if not the powers entirely. Now true, from what I've learned recently, there have been other explanations as to why the powers came back. You know, you had a, the reasoning for Adam's power coming back recently. You know, and I think the crossover always a ranger. Then you had the explanation for the Morphine Master. And I think, what was it, Dino Fury being another reason. You know, and the Morphing Grid being another reason for Jason's uh, return as the Red Ranger. So there have been various explanations, but I think the catalyst for all that being, you know, possible for, you know, all these people, this, what was it, the Sentinel Knight that did Adam's Restortion, the Morphing Master uh, that did, I think, uh, the Restortion of all the powers for that legendary battle in Megaforce, as well as the Morphing Grid for Jason's, I think the catalyst, the foundation of that, goes back to the in-space finale when Andros um, shattered Zordon's uh, energy tube to release Zordon's energy to purify, you know, like I said, all the darkness and evil, you know, at that time, as well as potentially, if not in possibly, and probably more, most legitimately, uh, give, you know, not only purify all the darkness and the evil, but also uh, restore or energize, you know, supify, if you will, uh, you know, any opportunity, you know, in the present or the future for, you know, the powers to be, the original powers uh, to be restored. So, um, I think that, I think honestly with all these other explanations, like I said, from the night, the morphing master, the morphing grid, and so on, you know, as well as uh, a ma as well as the master morpher which Tommy had, uh, I think it all, I think it all resonates back to when Andros destroyed Zordon's energy tube, and that allowed for not only the evil to be purified at that time, but to also um, restore any possible abilities, or any possibilities I should say, uh, past and future, if not present, if you will, mostly present and future, for the morphing powers, for the Power Ranger powers, I should say, to be uh, restored at any given time. So, to me, I think that's why, again, we see the Rangers back with their powers, because I think the catalyst for all that happening goes back to that moment from in space, which basically laid the foundation for all possible re possible possible restorations, I should say, of uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger uh, powers, or any Power Ranger powers uh, that had came had come afterwards, like in space, Lost in Th Lost Galaxy, Dino Thunder, um, you know, Turbo, you know, Zeo, you know, the list could go on, uh, Light Speed Rescue, Wild Force, you name it, you know, Time Force, um, it basically you know, it basically laid the catalyst for all that to happen, for all that to take place. So, you know, to me, I still go back to that as being like, in my opinion, you know, the chain event that, the, 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 uh, the, the event that caused the chain reaction is what I'm trying to say. The event that caused the chain reaction for all the powers to be restored in the future for all these different various entities that different the different uh, teams and of rangers you know or the past ranger members uh would encounter so that's just my opinion and i'm sticking to it i think it's all because like i said of that moment that caused the chain reaction that we see uh, in present day power rangers with all these entities that have the ability to do that being given that ability because zordon uh, made that sacrifice thanks to andros
Now, with that said, another question obviously has to do with Billy. Now, here's the thing. We know that there were behind the scenes issues uh, with uh, Billy and everything going all the way back, I think, to basically almost the end, not the, not the actual end, but close to the end of Power Rangers Zeo. There were problems behind the scenes, you know, with David Yost and the crew basically mocking him and, you know, teasing him and bullying him about his sexuality and all that. And he basically just had enough and decided to leave part ways uh, with, with the crew. Although you could tell through various interviews he's had in the past couple of years, uh, despite some I think mental battles and all that, some other mental battles and all everything, that um, he still was, you know, uh, loyal to to the Power Ranger uh, community, Power Ranger fan base. You know, he was still loyal to, you know, the franchise itself, to the show itself, and I, and I think honestly, the way he would sometimes talk in interviews about his exit. And, and everything, you can tell in a way that even though he was angry of how he was treated, which caused him to exit, I think basically you can also tell, and just in my opinion, I think you can tell he also regretted having to leave that way because there was still, I, I honestly, he probably felt that there was still a lot he could do. But again, you know, behind the scenes issues, and you can read up on this, you can look it up on Google, um, you know, caused him to leave, and the way he was written out, The way he was written out was the fact that um, his uh, um, aging machine, uh, the machine he created uh, what was with what was left of the power coins at that time, during the whole you know quest of the Zeo crystals deal, and they had the the whole Alien Rangers Zeo crystal deal that they were doing at the time, where the Rangers were shrunk down to kids, and the only one that was able to restore himself was to normal age with Billy. Well, the well the effects of that were basically that well Billy was starting to rapidly age and he was getting older and older um you know as time went on he just didn't know it until we got to this one episode of Zeo where basically um he was rap he suddenly just he just started to suddenly rapidly age and obviously he was played by Billy's character was played by an older actor uh, because David Jost had already left, or at least was on the verge of leaving. And you know, just to you know, wrap this up quick. Basically, the result, the result of it, uh, the result, basically, though the answer anyway, the result, answer if you will, uh, for Billy to get restored to his normal age, was to go to. Uh, Aquanoid. I think that was the name. I think that's the name of the planet of the Aqua Rangers, the alien rangers that came in. Um, but yeah, he had to go to Aquanoid to get restored. And when he got restored, um, he messaged obviously uh, the team in the story, showed that he was back to normal, but then surprised them by saying he's not going back. He's not going back to Earth. That he's going to stay on Arkanoid because, you know, he's found somebody. And we had met this female Arkanoid, uh, Aqua, Aquanoid, I think that's what they were called, um, in previous episode. And basically started some kind of budding little relationship and everything. Uh, but the only thing that kept them apart was he was on Earth and she, had, she was on that planet. So, mainly this was, so mainly this um, ending here was a logical way to... You know, not only write Billy out of the show and thus kind of resolve the whole David Yost behind the scenes issues and everything, um, but it was also kind of a way to wrap up that little uh, relationship arc that he had started, you know, episodes earlier with him and this female Arkanoid uh, scientist or nurse that was able to help him, help him be get restored. But the reason I bring all that up is. You know, that's the last time in continuity that we see Billy, you know. We don't see him, you know, return. 
afterwards. For all we know, he was on Aquanoid uh, the entire time um, after that. So hopefully we'll get an answer maybe to how he got back to to his planet. You know, did something happen on Aquanoid? Did, you know, the girl that he fell in love with there, you know, pass away? You know, did something happen to the planet? You know, we're not really sure. Um, but, you know, to me, you know, to me, if, you, if there is any other question outside of how the Ranger powers were restored, I think Billy's return to Earth is another question. That, that to me, is another question that has to be answered. And hopefully we'll get some kind of, you know, ramification on that. Uh, not ramification, but some kind of resolution to that uh, um, in the process. I do apologize if it sounds like I'm rambling or a little quiet. It's about 8.54 in the morning. Trying to do this before my mom gets up because we got to go later on to get our taxes done and everything. So trying to get something out there for you guys. Um, you know, so yeah, um, anyway. So again, like I said, that's one question that needs to be answered. Um, you know, the, the obviously, obviously the other answer or the other question um, that needs to be answered basically is when did this new command center, this new ranger network um, that's being obviously hinted at be uh, established or was established? Well, when was this whole ranger network and everything uh, established, you know, when, when was it established and everything, you know, you know, what team, obviously we get an idea through this little scene where we see them working, we see Alpha, he's looking on, looking on a monitor that says the Bandora Project, which is a nice little callback to the original Super Sentai, which Mighty Morphin is based on, where Rita's character was known as the Re Witch Bandora, and then on this little monitor we see all these locations uh, that we've seen throughout the Power Ranger uh, history of shows. Turtle Cove, Terra Venture, um, Miranoid, I think, is on there. Um, you know, just all the places that we've come to know. You know, the, the, the time for, uh, what is it, the Megaship, if you will, the uh, in space, the Megaship, if you will. So we've seen all of that. We've seen all of those little um, locations being locations or areas being referenced on that screen, which basically tells me that if needed, they will call upon certain rangers in those regions to take care of whatever problem um, arises that that team is more familiar with than any other team. So since we have Rita coming back and everything here, obviously you call upon the Mighty Morphin team. And um, uh, again, I think one of the biggest questions people are going to have is when was this you know, when was this um, network, you know, this, I, I guess you could say this network, this Justice League, if you will, of Power Rangers uh, established officially to be called upon at a moment's notice, depending, like I said, on whatever threat uh, threatens the world that they might be more familiar with. So that's, that's one question. Uh, that's another question that I think hopefully gets answered. The other question, the fourth question, is... You know, if Rita was purified and became, what was her name, Madame Mistress or Madame Midi or whatever her name, basically a good, a good person now, basically I guess the Zordon, if you will, of one of the more recent Power Ranger shows and everything, um, you have to ask yourself, you know, if she's purified, if the person was purified of the evil essence, then, you know, how did, how is Rita back? And there is a clue in the trailer that Andrew uh, Andre Meadows, Black Nerd Comedy, Andrew uh, Andre Meadows of Black Nerd Comedy, um, brought up, and he said, uh, basically, you know, he said, basically in the trailer, and you, you can see it in the trailer. She said, after all these years, she has a new body, and you're thinking, okay, that's kind of strange because that. That's kind of strange to say because how can she have a new body unless her body was destroyed, the body that got purified and is someone else now, Madame Mystery or whatever her name is, Madame D, D or whatever. You know, how is that possible if she's now basically, like I said, the Zordon of a recent Power Ranger series? And the only explanation that I think is going to be given is 
uh, basically the evil that was in her, uh, when she got purified of it, escaped. It basically escaped. It, it, and when I heard that it being a possibility that it's an evil spirit that possessed uh, the, the girl that became Rita in the story, that became Madam now, uh, that's on the good side, if you will, you know, it, it, it reminded me a lot of Starscream's ghost situation. Uh, let me explain. Let me explain in case you guys don't know. Uh, in Transformers Generation 1, and this guy continued on uh, into Beast Wars, which was a continuation of Generation 1 in a way, and it was also replicated, referenced, and acknowledged, and even uh, basically uh, given, I guess you could say, a legacy treatment, if you will, throughout the lore and generations of Transformers. But basically, in Transformers the movie, which came out, which came out basically 36 and a half years ago, going to be 37 this year, um, Megatron got reformatted by the evil planet, e by the planet, by the evil planet eating uh, being Unicron. And, you know, when he was reformatted, he became Galvatron, and by becoming Galvatron, obviously he still had the memories of Megatron, you know, and everything, and he went back to Cybertron and basically prevented Starscream from completing his, you know, his usurpness, his now control of, of leadership of the Decepticons by basically uh, atomizing him, disintegrate, basically blasting him, and as a result, atomizing, disintegrating him into ash. And there was a key moment in there where Starscream's eyes, you know, they, gl they glowed and they just flashed up and everything into the sky. And that kind of told me that his ghost, his spirit, which has been termed to been have a, which has been termed in lore in over the past decade or so to have, you know, his spirit, his spark, has been mutated and everything. So that's the explanation why he was able to live on even after his body, his physical body was destroyed. So to me, that's that redness that came out of his eyes when he was being blasted was his spirit, his spark escaping, and everything. And looking, as we would see later on in Season 3 with Starscream's Ghost, Ghost in the Machine, and all that, uh, he would use his essence to possess um, other Transformers, either Autobots or Decepticons, or, or, or basically, you know, uh, Predacons, if you will. I think that's what they would call Predacons in, in Beast Wars. So, um, anyway, it, it reminded me, Anyway, when I when I heard this being a potential explanation as to why Rita said, you know, in the trailer, after all these years I have a new body, and then Andre wondering, okay, we know that the person that was Rita is purified and is now on the side of good, you know, as this madam character, but what happened to that evil essence that was in here once the purification happened? And again, it got me thinking along the lines that it pulled a star scream. It pulled a star scream and escaped and has been journeying, you know, and traveling throughout space for decades, for the past 30 plus years, before it landed maybe in some kind of robotic body that was being worked on or something like that, and maybe lay dormant there until the time came for it to be resurrected. Again, you know, we, again, that's the only explanation I can think of, because it does give me those kind of vibes and all that. And hopefully we and, and hopefully we'll get an answer. But yeah, the question will be, how is Rita back? If the person that was Rita is good, how is she back? And you know, in robot form, arm and everything. And hopefully we'll get an answer of, you know, it's the spirit, it's the evil spirit of Rita that possessed the robot body, just like it possessed the, um, you know, just like it possessed basically. As I was just checking something here taking my camera making sure it's still running <laughs> usually the battery will die on me sometimes unexpectedly uh, but any well not unexpectedly but when it's getting low but anyway you know to me the question is you know you know basically hopefully oh the quest well can, let me get back on track here all right hopefully like I said the question that will get answered is you know you know when did, you know uh, basically how did this happen how how is you know, Rita back, if, you know, the Rita that was originally possessed is good now, you know, how did, you know, how did this happen? You know, did, you know, again, you know, did it pull a star scream and, 
you know, escape after the purification happened and, you know, wander throughout space, find a body, the robotic body that landed in and lay dormant there until the time was right. Again, we don't know. We don't know how this is or how this could be, but hopefully we'll get an, uh, an explanation. Hopefully. Hopefully. And I think the fifth and final question, obviously, is... Um, the fifth and final question, obviously, to me, is, you know, basically, how long into the future does this take place? Because obviously, if they're referencing, you know, all these locations from previous Power Ranger, you know, incarnations, shows, and all that, the question, obviously, is, when does it take place? Does it take place in present day, 30 years later, you know, 2023? Does it take place, you know, during, you know, the run of Dino Fury and Cosmic Fury? You know, does it take place then? Does it take place after Dino Thunder? You know, that's the question. Does it take place after the Megaforce Legendary Battle? You know, uh, does it take place after the Ninja Steel uh, crossover with Lord Draken, Draken uh, as the main villain? You know, when when does this take place? When does this event in the timeline take place, and everything? You know that that's that's the question. That's to me probably the question that needs to be answered more than anything. When does this take place? Because if we can get an answer to that, if we can get an answer to that as to when and where it takes place, I think that will give us a good idea as to, you know, how Rita's back, how the powers are restored, when the network was made and all that, how Billy was able to make his return, and all that. You know, to me, that's going to answer a lot. That question right there, it's when it takes place, that's going to answer a lot of questions. It really is. You know, it really is. Again, like I said, how the powers are restored, how Billy is back, when the network was created, you know, how is Rita back, and everything, how did Billy come back, and all that. You know, this right here will be the question that will answer a lot. A lot, will help answer a lot of those questions like, you know, how the power is back, you know, how is Billy back, and everything, and all that. You know, like I said, how Billy's back, back, um, how Rita's back, and all that. So, so yeah, to me, the question of when and where this takes place, need, hopefully will answer a lot of those, help answer a lot of those questions that, you know, myself and others among, you know, myself and others, you know, want, want to try to get an answer to among other questions that this will probably give us or probably leave us and all that. But, uh, yeah, those to me are, in my opinion, the, f I think, did I list off five, I think, five, yeah, I think five questions that need to be answered, you know, with this special. When, you know, like, how are the powers restored? When did Billy get back? You know, how is Rita back? When was the network made? And when does it take place? You know, that, that those are the questions, in my opinion, that need to be answered. Because I know there has been talk that this could be like an alternate version, an alternate timeline that's identical to the, to the prime timeline, to the prime verse timeline and everything. And that might be an explanation. But if you're referencing all these locations... Uh, yeah, I think it's in, as I've mentioned before in the last video, it's within the same continuity. And, um, hopefully, like I said, we'll get, um, we'll get an answer to all those questions, if not more, um, with this special when it comes out on April 19th. But let me know what your thoughts are, guys. What do you think, what, what, what do you think about these questions that I want to see answered along with some that you may have? You know, like, what questions do you want answered and everything? Comment below, live chat during the premiere. You will get an audio podcast version of this later on, hopefully. And until next time, also check out the Teespring store if you're watching on YouTube to check out my merchandise there that you can't get anywhere else. And until next time, guys, I am out.